right so i wanted to make a top 10 best transformers of 2021 i thought 2021 was a great year for figures whether it was official third party all that good stuff there was a lot of really cool stuff between studio series studio series 86 kingdom masterpiece just a lot of good stuff going on so when i started writing out all of my contenders for this list i ended up writing down a lot more than 10 so i will also have an honorable mentions list and it's going to be a decent length one there's just so much good stuff this year and i really wanted to highlight a lot of the ones that i thought was the best so again this list it's going to be a mix of official and third party figures all transformers at the end of the day so let's get into the honorable mentions also with this honorable mentions list this is not in any specific order if i don't think of this as counting down from like 20 or whatever into the top 10 or anything like that these are not in a specific order first up for the honorable mentions is the studio series 86 hot rod now just to be very straightforward i do not like g1 hot rod i don't think he's a good character i really don't like his design i'm one of those people that's like he got octopus prime kill he just he kind of sucks but this figure is really cool for better or worse it is very animation accurate and the thing that really drew me to it was the sort of the early talk of the engineering and stuff like that and the engineering in the figure is really freaking cool to a point where he's honestly kind of a downscaled masterpiece figure like he's awesome i love the accessories with all the effects parts and the matrix even though the matrix is just reused from the earthrise optimus prime figure and he has the articulation to be able to hold up the matrix like the iconic scene in the animated movie overall really fun and cool figure next up is king Kingdom Ractonite. Now, I love the fossilizer stuff. You'll be seeing one of them on the top 10. And Ractonite is, I kind of flip-flop because between this one and the one that's in the top 10, I kind of flip-flop on which one's the best because I really like the look of Ractonite. Like his design, the dinosaur mode's cool. All the stuff you can make with him is pretty cool. Now, I wanted to at least list him here in the honorable mentions. Next is the Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Starscream. And now it's weird for me because I have two figures based on this design and character on this list, whether it's in the honorable mentions like this one or in the top 10. Because even though I love the Blitzwing design that this design is basically reused from, I'm not really a fan of the Starscream version. It's just, I think it's the head that really throws it off. I don't like the head. I don't like the face. I can look past it. It's just, I'm not really a fan. But this figure is a lot of fun. It also helps that I wasn't expecting to find him when I did I just randomly went into a Walmart one day and I actually thought it was Blitzwing at first just at a glance until I decided to actually take a closer look at it bam it was the Starscream figure and it's pretty cool the robot mode is a lot of fun he's pretty big especially compared to a lot of Voyager figures lately and I actually like the alternate mode a lot I really don't care about any of the kibble that kind of hangs down really accurate as a whole and just overall I really like this figure next up is the studio series Dino and man I was tempted to put this one in the top 10 just because of the fact that finally we got a movie accurate Dino that isn't a remold of a sideways figure. It only took him 10 years, but it's not an actual Ferrari just because licensing and stuff, but it doesn't really bother me. It looks like decently close enough anyway. And the robot mode is really good. He does have maybe some articulation issues, but nothing about him really bothers me. He's a really cool figure and it's awesome to finally have an official figure of him. After that is Studio Series Sideswipe. Man, I feel like this figure got disrespected by Hasbro so much because by the time he was actually officially even acknowledged, most people had already found him in stores, including me. Again, this was kind of like the Starscream thing where I decided to stop by a Walmart or two as I heard people were finding him, and there he was. Of course, unlike that Starscream, I was actually intentionally looking for Sideswipe. I didn't expect to see that Starscream figure. But this Sideswipe is a lot better than I was anticipating. The silver paint really helps him, and just something about him I really like a lot better than the Dark of the Moon version, despite the fact that they are mostly the same figure. Of course, this being the hardtop Corvette probably helped, just because I prefer that. Although, they didn't put the headlights on the front, which is unfortunate, but hey, it doesn't really kill it for me. Up next, and it's almost weird that this is an honorable mention, but it's Fans Toys Quietus. I'd actually been interested in this one for a long time because I thought the robot mode and jet mode looked super cool, pretty sleek, not really a whole lot of kibble in either mode. And as with a lot of figures, 
just really interested in the engineering. Plus, it just looked like the best Cyclonus, the most cartoon accurate of the bunch, at least in my opinion. And I was able to get him at the tail end of the year. And he's pretty awesome. He seems a bit more fiddly and not quite as solid as some of the other fans toy stuff. I only have a few of their figures. He definitely seems a bit more just kind of like, just not quite as solid compared to something like their uh, Astro Drain. But still a great figure nonetheless, a great masterpiece scaled figure and the best Cyclonus out there easily. Next up is Mastermind Creations Optus Pexus, and man, this figure is awesome. He's based off of the IDW Orion Pax, which is sort of a recolored version of the IDW Stormbringer Optimus Prime design. I haven't completely read through IDW, so I'm not sure on some of the nuances of the design, but just from what I've been able to see, it's kind of the Stormbringer design, but colored differently. But man, like, I like the robot mode a lot. It's a kind of a different take on Optimus Prime in a lot of ways. I just, I really like the look of it. Vehicle mode's pretty cool. It's maybe a tad... <sighs> I guess boring, I hate to say boring, but maybe a bit boring, but it's solid, it looks good, and engineering is cool on it, and of course, the articulation, it is insane, I think has really raised the bar for what a lot of third party companies can do with figures. Next is the Kingdom Arc, he is one of the weaker titans, but I do think he should get a mention just because the arc mode is super cool, and the integration with mainframe is neat, especially him turning into Teletran 1. My only issues are that some bits in the arc mode don't really hold together as much as I would like and with the robot mode the hands kind of suck there's no real way around that the hands suck I kind of wish the head had a bit more articulation but he's pretty fun I find him to be possibly the easiest to play with out of the Titans and last on the honorable mentions is the devil savior sweeping aka revenge of the fallen rampage slash skipjack this figure is amazing and honestly I'm still debating if he should actually be on the top 10 instead of just in the honorable mentions because I feel like this is easily the best rampage figure bar none. It is based a little bit off of the Studio Series version compared to the other figures in the set which some of them probably should have been but hey we're already kind of past that point. But I think that as an individual member he's easily the best of the set. I'm not sure that their upcoming scrapper will be able to change that just because he is so good. Details and paint are great. The bulldozer mode is pretty cool. It looks the part well. And it looks great. Transformation and engineering isn't too hard. There are a couple bits I think are made be a tad fragile you want to watch out for but otherwise he's solid the leg mode is great my issue so far with that is that like some parts seem to not hold together as well maybe just from the stress of the combined form but i'm kind of working on tightening that stuff and the robot mode is fantastic my only issue with the robot mode is the fact that i feel like his sort of uh i guess the tail just sort of ends in a stump i kind of wish it was longer or maybe there's a different point to stand it on i don't know otherwise great just the fact that there's finally a figure based on this design that has elbows unless one of the legend scaled versions did I, I can't remember but I know like the Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe and obviously the studio series Voyager did not it's great to have elbows on him he is so good now we are finally past the honorable mentions probably too many but hey again I wanted to give a lot of figures their due now let's look at the top 10 so starting at number 10 we have the studio series Jolt figure now starting off I do admit that this is a pretty flawed figure but just the fact it even got made and it's the first time that we're seeing something that is accurate to Jolt's actual CGI design, I think puts him on the list. The character, I think after looking at YouTube, he got like 50 seconds of screen time and none of it honestly is really all that clear even in his highlight scene of combining Jetfire's parts with Optimus Prime. It's just really hard to get a good look at him and between this figure and the figure's box art, it's the first time that we're seeing Jolt's proper CGI design and I think that's pretty awesome. And you know, the figure itself got a lot of good detail the transformations neat although some of it can be a bit finicky i think the car mode's great you know it's it's a car <laughs> the robot mode i like a lot although it doesn't ruin it for me but the hip panels can be a bit of a problem but you can also pop those off since they're on ball joints if you want to i like them a lot what can i say it's pretty cool Next up at number 9 is Kingdom Air Razor. Now, despite not being into the character, this is a figure I was actually pretty hyped for because it just looks so good. As for the character herself, it's weird. I like Air Razor, but she kind of frustrates me because I never felt like she had a lot to do in the show and she seemed like she kind of got her ass kicked a good bit. But as for the figure, like the robot mode to me is borderline perfect. I really can't think of any issues with it, honestly. Like, the articulation's good, everything compressed 
Nemesis, it's still accurate to the Beast Wars design while kind of being a bit more modern. It looks great. And then the bird mode, I think, is really good. Of course, it kind of has the typical Beast thing of robot parts hanging out underneath, but otherwise, I think it's good. Like, the wing articulation is insane. You can get some very realistic looking flapping motions with it. Like, it'd be great for a stop motion or something like that. So, overall, I really like Air Razor. She's a lot of fun. Number eight is going to be the fans hobby, Naval Commander. Now, Armada is the first series of Transformers I was really into. It came out when I was around eight years old. So Armada Prime is kind of special for me. And also just the fact that I think that's a great design. It's one of his best. He looks awesome. And this figure, while definitely more of a stylized take on the design than Cartoon Accurate, is great. Now, the main, just the regular robot mode, I feel like it could be better. It has some articulation issues. Some things can look a bit odd just because it does have different proportions compared to the regular Armada design. But, you know, I still think it works. The trailer is pretty cool. You know, it looks good in the truck mode. I think the face mode is pretty cool, even though I, I just don't really have a whole lot of smaller figures to put with it. Spark plug as a minicon is cool. Now, the combined mode is definitely where it's at. He just, he looks great. Articulation is great for it. Some things are maybe a tad limited but looks fantastic he's awesome of course the main thing with this figure are a lot of the quality control issues some breakages i actually did have a break on mine with one of the combined mode connectors but i'm almost certain that's more so a flaw on my end of just causing a break instead of something messing up on the figure's end i guess if that makes any sense so yeah number eight fans hobby naval commander now number seven is going to be the kingdom paleo tracks man love this guy he was the first fossilized and also, if I'm remembering correctly, the first Kingdom figure that I actually got. And in a lot of ways, he hasn't been beat by any of the other fossilizers. Like I said before, I, sometimes I kind of feel like Ractonite is better. And maybe in the robot mode, he is. I still kind of debate on that. But Paleotrex, he's great. I'm a bit biased because Tyrannosaurus Rex is my favorite dinosaur. And he turns into a skeletal version of that. I like the fact that the masked head looks like Optimus Primal's mace. And I didn't realize that for the longest time somehow and he just looks great and i love just how weird the fossilizers are and i still think if you want to do like combined forms and fan modes and weapons and armor that paleotrex is still the best one for that Coming up at number six is the Cyber Factory Starstorm. This is the second Bumblebee movie Starstorm to be on this list. This figure completely surprised me. I was planning on getting this one for a long time, despite, again, kind of being a little iffy on the design itself. But I just thought it looked really good. And I was thinking, okay, you know, this is pretty much an MP scaled version of that. You know, it'll look good with some other figures. But man, when I got it, I just instantly loved the thing. The robot mode looks great. Fantastic paint and detail, weathering. Weapons look cool. He's got really good articulation. Nothing comes across as being too limited for me. Transformation is complex enough, but still I would dare say on the simpler side and the alternate mode looks great. Like I really don't have any complaints about the figure. He just overall looks and kind of plays great. We're now halfway up the list, and sitting at number five is the Fans Toys Thomas. This is another one that I was really into for a while and very interested in, mostly because of the engineering side of things, just because it's a masterpiece scale triple changer, and the fact that I actually really like Astro Train. In June of 2020, I started a big watch through of all of the main Transformers shows, and obviously started with G1. I did all the shows, mostly in release date order. And I got into Astro Train between the episodes Triple Takeover, and the one where he's kind of worshipped as a god or something by some aliens. I don't know, just that episode I kind of dug with him. And of course, him having his Astro Force. But with this guy, I think all the modes are great. Usually triple changers have one mode that's usually kind of compromised for the sake of the other ones. But I really don't feel like any of the modes are sacrificed. The only thing I might kind of prefer is some more articulation in the robot mode. But even then, I feel like what he has is good enough. Overall, this is a fantastic figure and kind of like the fans toys. Cyclonus is easily the best Astro Train out there. Number four on this list is going to be the MP52 Starscream. I'm going to kind of include Thundercracker in this too since it's the same mold otherwise. I think this is a fantastic figure. I never liked the previous versions of Starscream in the Masterpiece line. And of course I prefer this one having a bit more of the cartoon look since that's kind of what I started going for in figures in the main Masterpiece line. Both modes look great. I think the engineering is awesome. Articulation 
is great. I really don't care about the lack of a waist swivel. That doesn't bother me one bit. A lot of the accessories are cool. All the alternate faces, the blast effects, the stand, just great. I really don't know how else to put it. I really like this figure and he easily takes the number four spot. Up next at number three is the 3-0 premium scale The Last Night Megatron. This is one I've been hyped for for a while. I got him at the end of February in 2021. And it's funny because I actually fully paid for the pre-order in February of 2019. So it was a full two years before he came around. I didn't mind. It just, it got delayed a bit. I know they reworked some things so it had the fully die cast skeleton like the DLX stuff does. But man, just the presence this guy has, the paintwork the detail even the light up features just the accessories this figure is absolutely amazing i love it i think it's easily the best premium scale figure they've done now i haven't interacted with all of them i only have the dark of the moon megatron last night optimus prime and dark of the moon starscream again i haven't messed with everything but for me this is easily their best premium scale figure and i almost wish i would have gotten the i guess deluxe version i can't remember what it was called but the one that came with the shield just because the shield's pretty cool he would have looked great with it i definitely do not regret getting this guy he's awesome now number two on this list is the big boy himself has lab unicron man does this guy have some presence obviously being the largest transformer ever made i was very glad to have been able to help back the thing and just he is fantastic he does have some issues like say the kibble that doesn't bother me though honestly not really one bit i think he looks fine and i really kind of like this as a sort of standard unicron design instead of something specific like say specifically being like G1 cartoon Unicron and for me anyway that's going to be the studio cell figure that I also have yeah this guy just has some presence with the size looks great in both modes especially the planet mode man the planet form is beautiful and I love the opening mouth gimmick just overall a very awesome figure and I'm glad to have it all right and now the number one figure for me personally of 2020 is Unique Toys Nero, aka Age of Extinction, Galvatron. Now, despite Unique Toys' way of working some black magic, this figure did have a lot going against it, just from the basic just robot mode design of not having any truck parts on it at all, except for maybe the headlights of the truck being on the chest, and then the fact that in the movie, he has the whole pixelated flying cube transformation thing, literally an impossible transformation. I was into this figure just from the prototype stages, and then actually getting it in hand, it's beautiful. I think it's their best sculpted figure, Figure. It has better detail than they previously had on figures, and I feel like their upcoming Dark of the Moon Megatron is even better than this. Uh, the paintwork is fantastic. He has none of the truck mode kibble really showing, except for maybe being some tires in the shoulders of the robot mode, which I remember someone on the TFW 2005 website trying to complain about. I thought it was completely stupid. Like, I don't understand why that'd be a complaint, because they're even covered up. You really don't see them. And then there's some wheels on the bottom of the feet but again you're not going to look at them unless you're looking for it otherwise he's completely kibble free he has a complex transformation but i don't feel like it's actually all that hard which is always the cool thing with unique toys is they're pretty complex but not but not to the point where you want to throw something against the wall and then the truck mode looks great i understand that it does have some proportion issues and of course there's some paint scratching unfortunately on some pieces on the front of the truck but even then no real problem for me just overall this was a figure that completely just took my breath away like it's awesome and and for me, easily nabs the top spot even over something like HasLab Unicron. So yes, that is my top 10 Transformers list. I know I probably over-explained some things and probably took a little long on the honorable mentions, but hey, there are just so many cool figures that came out this year I wanted to talk about and get to a lot of them. But now, in the comments, tell me what are your top 10 figures of the year? What's your favorite official figure, unofficial, all that good stuff? And what do you think about some of my choices? And now, to be honest, this list is more so kind of like my feelings on it when I made the list because aside from Unique Toys Nero and HasLab Unicron, I feel like a a lot of these could kind of move around at any given point in time because again there's time from like maybe devil's savior sweeping should have been on there or fans toys quietus or studio series dino yeah it all just kind of depends but i still feel pretty good about this list i got going here so yeah that's my top 10 best transformer figures of 2021 as always if you like what i do please leave a like give it that old thumbs up and of course if you want to see more of what i do please subscribe thanks you guys for watching have a great day